Okay, so here we are back on NYDC1, and I say back on NYDC1 because this is the uh, machine that I've used to demonstrate a lot of things throughout the course. NYDC1 is the original domain controller, the, the first domain controller that I created in the globalmantics.local domain. But I will tell you that if you want to follow along with what I'm doing here, you don't have to have a, a setup identical to mine. You simply need to have a computer that has Windows Server 2012 with Active Directory domain services installed. Now the tool that we want to go into is something called Group Policy Management. So I'm going to hit my Start button to take me into the Start screen. And here I'll find Group Policy Management. Now I also could have gone in via the Server Manager, you know, go to the Tools menu. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. You could also even just start typing in Group Policy Management and search that way. But this is the tool that we want to look at. And you'll see here that in this tool, we have our forest, globalmantics.local, where it shows our domains and sites. If I expand our domains, here's globalmantics.local. Expand that, you'll see that there are various containers, and we'll look at some of these. One particular container that I want to point out to you is this one that's called Group Policy Objects. This is a container that will show you all of the group policy objects throughout the domain, regardless of what containers they may be linked to. Okay, so it's in this particular container that I could go ahead and right click and select new and we'll say demo unlinked GPO. Notice right here that there's also something called source starter GPO and I don't have any that I can choose from and the reason why is because there's another container here called starter GPOs which I'll talk to you about in just a moment. So I'm just going to click OK since I don't have any starter GPOs to work with. And I now have an unlinked GPO, meaning I've created a group policy object and I could go in and I could edit that object. Now I'm not going to because that's another lesson where we'll talk about the actual settings themselves. But once the settings have been set, they won't affect anything unless I link it to a particular container. So what I could do is I could go to one of my containers, whether it be the domain itself, so I could go to the domain and I could say link an existing GPO. Or I could right click on a, an organization unit like this New York organizational unit. I could right click link an existing GPO. I'll do that one. And it, there's my list. Demo unlinked GPO. Click OK. And if I expand New York, hey look at that. I now have a GPO there called demo unlinked GPO. Now it's funny that I called it demo unlinked GPO because well, now it's linked, <laughs> so that's not a good name that you'd want to give to a GPO. You would want to give it a name that is appropriate to whatever the settings we're going to affect. Right? So if, let's say you create a group policy object to lock down the control panel so that users can't get in there and mess with their machines. Well, then I might call the GPO, you know, lock control panel, something like that. All right? So that's one way that you can apply these GPOs is you can create them and then link them. Or another thing you could do is if I right click on the container again, I could create a GPO in this domain and link it here. So if I click on that, I get my new GPO window again and I can say demo linked GPO. Again, I have the option of the starter GPO, we'll talk about it in a second. Click OK. Notice I now have another GPO here called demo linked GPO and also if I come down here to my group policy objects container, I have demo linked GPO there. In other words, that's the all encompassing list of, you know, all the GPOs in throughout the domain. Now I also want to show you that you could link a GPO to more than one container. I could right click on the domain controllers container, link an existing GPO, demo linked GPO. Look at this. Demo linked GPO is here. And demo linked GPO is here. Heck, I could go to the domain itself, link an existing GPO, demo link GPO. Now I have demo link GPO, demo link GPO, demo link GPO. What does this mean? It's linked in multiple places. It means that the settings that I apply inside that GPO, they are going to have an effect on objects that exist within each of these three containers. All right, so that's how you can create an link or therefore apply GPOs to certain containers. Now down here in the starter GPOs container, right now it doesn't currently exist in the domain. I could click create starter GPOs folder if I wanted to. Let me go ahead and click that now and boom, look at that. 
I've got all these templates of GPOs that Microsoft has deemed are, um, you know, maybe a, a standard that you might want to do. And I find this interesting that even with the release of Windows Server 2012, they still have Windows XP and Vista starter GPOs as opposed to maybe like a Windows 7 or Windows 8 starter GPO. That might make a little more sense. But here's the deal. You can go out on the internet. You can search out those starter GPOs. And again, all these starter GPOs really are, are nothing more than templates of settings, typically security-related settings. So that if you know there's a certain type of client that you want to apply this GPO to, rather than starting from scratch and having to do all the settings yourself, you can go ahead and, well, have them uh, kind of started for you here, and then you tweak it from there. Now, I mentioned that we, uh, that, you know, there, there's some exceptions. Once we know the actual order that things are going to process, we then can make exceptions. And the first exception that I want to talk to you about is something called block inheritance. So if you remember the whole structure that I had up on the screen for LSDOU, if I go to one of those containers, and usually this would be a lower container, okay, so this might be like the, an organizational unit, I go to the New York container here. If I right click, I can select block inheritance and I get this little circle, this little blue circle with the exclamation mark in it. Block inheritance basically says, if you are an object, if you are a user or a computer object in this container, ignore the LSDOU process and only apply the GPOs that are linked directly to this container. Okay, so you're putting up this block saying, don't just ignore everything from above. Don't inherit anything from above. So that's one exception. And that exception, again, is done at the container level. And you cannot selectively block, by the way. Okay, you can't selectively say, hey, I want to block this one GPO from above, but this other GPO from above, I do like. The only way you can do that is if you want to block all the GPOs from above, and then there's one that you do want, you'd have to link that GPO explicitly to this container. By the way, speaking of this container, you see how there's a link order here, right? Because I have two GPOs in this container. This order is also important because if there's a conflict between these GPOs, it's going to again be the last applied GPO that takes precedence. So you may need to change the link order to go ahead and get the results that you want. Now, another exception that we have is something called enforced. And another term for enforced, if you go back in time, if you go back to the Windows Server 2003 days or Windows 2000 days, it used to be called no override. But now it's called enforced. And this is something that you would typically do higher up in the hierarchy. So we'll say up at the domain level. Now, you don't do it on the domain itself. You do it on a link. And I will tell you, I know this can be a, a little tedious, but you have to know the specifics. Block inheritance is done on the container. Enforced is done on a link. If I take the demo linked GPO and I right click on it and I select enforced, again, I get a little bit of an icon here that might be kind of hard to see. It's, a, it's an icon of a, of, a, of a padlock. If that is in play, then what that means is that those settings are going to be applied at that container level and all the way down through the hierarchy, regardless of block inheritance and regardless of conflict. So whatever settings are in this demo linked GPO, even though the New York container is saying, no, no, I don't accept settings from above in the hierarchy, actually the domain with this dom demo linked GPO is going to say, uh, yeah, actually, you are taking these settings. They are enforced. They are mandatory. You're not getting out of it. All right, so enforced is going to override the block inheritance. And then I also mentioned that those settings will be enforced in the event of a conflict. So let's say we didn't even have the block inheritance, right? New York's not blocking inheritance. Let's just say that New York has a GPO in it that conflicts with demo link GPO up here at the domain level. And I know it's a little bit confusing because I have it linked in both places. So here, let's get rid of this link. And notice, by the way, it says you want to delete the link. You're not deleting the GPO itself. 
Okay, so let's say demo unlinked GPO it has a conflict with demo linked GPO. Even though the OU is the last one applied, and so therefore it should win, enforced is going to beat that out. All right, so you need to understand block inheritance and enforced.